I can see via the Webex, you all look exceptionally well, and so do I. But we can spend the whole afternoon complimenting one another. Uh, so welcome to this special meeting of the Inverclyde Council. Chan, are there any apologies or declarations of interest? Uh, we have an apology from Councillor McElhenney, Chris McElhenney. Uh, I don't see Councillor Nelson. I don't think he's here, uh, but he hasn't put in apologies. Are there any declarations of interest? No, there don't seem to be. Good. No. I think Councillor Nelson's trying to log on. I think Councillor Nelson is with us now. I can see his name on the screen. Yeah, I, I was having difficulty getting logged on. That's fine. That's that's fine, and it's uh, where we can now proceed. I'll I'll not uh, repeat my preamble. I think we'll just move to. Um, we have had apologies and declarations. Do you, Ennis, have any? declarations to make no i don't think so no, right so then we can proceed to item two the 2021 to 23 revenue budget and the 2021 to 24 capital program and if you bear with me i'll uh, i i want to say just for a few seconds uh, the background to this this budget evolved during a particularly difficult time for the Council. So I'd like to express my gratitude to the members, both of the Policy and Resources Committee and of the Members Budget Working Group. In addition, I want to thank our officers and trade union colleagues, all of whom contributed greatly to the final report before us today. Alan, would you outline the key features of this budget? Thank you, Provost, and good afternoon, everyone. This report seeks approval uh, for the revenue budget for 2021-22 and other decisions to reduce the estimated 22-23 funding gap and to seek various other decisions in respect of the Council's reserves, capital programme, contribution to the IJB in the Common Good Budget. The proposals in this report confirm the allocation of £18.8 million from reserves and the proposed 2021-24 capital programme. All proposals in the report have been discussed with and are supported by the Members' Budget Working Group. And as usual, the trades unions have been engaged via the Joint Budget Working Group throughout the process. Finally, may I take this opportunity to thank both the Members' Budget Working Group and the Joint Budget Group and colleagues in the CMT, and particularly my finance team, uh, for their support and guidance throughout this unprecedented budget process, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Alan. Um, before I ask Stephen, uh, Councillor McCabe, as Council Leader, 
to speak to the budget. Does any member have a question for Alan? Now, at this point, any any such questions would be of a purely technical na nature, as opposed to speeches. Anything in the chat? No. So I take it that uh, there are no questions for Alan. Stephen. Uh, th thanks, Provost. <coughs> I'm pleased uh, again this year to be moving proposals agreed unanimously by the Cross-Party Members Budget Working Group, and these are reflected in the recommendations contained in the report. And given it's such a, a lovely day, I'm not going to speak as long as I normally speak on Budget Day. I'm sure people will be, be pleased about that. But obviously, I have to, to make some comment. Uh, and can I start by reiterating your thanks uh, to all those involved in developing the budget? Um, Obviously, particularly the CMT and officers, Alan and his team in finance. Our trade union colleagues, obviously, we as elected members didn't have any engagement with the trade unions this year. So maybe that's a good sign that they're, they're happy with the budget. But I know that they were behind the scenes and engaging with, with management. And I think that's a testimony to, to the good industrial relations we have within the council that management and, and unions can work in such a constructive way. I can also thank the members of the Members Budget Working Group. I think it's been a, a very productive group over the past nine months or so, uh, and obviously all other members who have contributed either directly or indirectly to, to, to that process. So, since we last met, um, there's been two significant factors. And the UK government obviously announced its budget on the, the 3rd of March, subject to the sort of parliamentary process, and the Scottish government announced its first final budget, which was approved through the parliamentary process. And Alan's obviously detailed in the report the sort of initial implications of the final budget settlement for the, for the council. But maybe just mention a, a few things about the Scottish uh, budget. Uh, council leaders met last Friday um, to discuss both the budget and another number of other matters. And I have to say there was unanimous agreement to a motion expressing deep disappointment with the, the local government settlement and we actually recognize the fact that due to the the change in public sector pay policy without any additional funding for councils and the reprofiling of the capital grant settlement means that actually councils are worse off than we were when the initial draft budget was presented in january so as part of the response to that council leaders uh, have invited Kate Forbes, the finance secretary, to come along to a special meeting of council leaders, hopefully within uh, a short period of pressure that we, we face. One of, one of the key parts of the, of the final budget was obviously a decision to baseline the £90 million freeze grant. And, and while that's welcome, it, it does impact in future years, it doesn't actually impact in. in the next financial year, uh, and that that apparently was a concession to the Liberal Democrats. Although a number of people have sought to take credit for that particular decision on the, the part of the government, but it's worth remembering that um, that actual council tax freeze grant will cost the Scottish government, and therefore Scottish taxpayers, nine hundred million pound over the the, the next ten years. Nine hundred million pound. Because that ninety million pound has to be paid every single year, uh, and that's a lot of money with for me with uh, a lot of benefit. And as we know, a, a quarter of households in Inverclyde won't benefit from the the council tax freeze. So that's why we brought forward a proposal within the report to credit one hundred pound into the council tax accounts of nearly four thousand uh, of the local households, and the rest will obviously benefit from the. The freeze itself, but that's only between 43p a week and £1.88 a week. Council leaders on Friday also uh, discussed the thorny issue of pay in light of the, the final local government settlement. Um, and we, we were advised that the deal between the SNP and the Greens uh, to increase the public sector uh, pay policy in return for the Greens supporting the, the budget will cost local government £240 million if we were to match that. 
and our funding has only increased by ninety four million pounds. And I think we need to remember that that ninety four million pounds is not not just to cover pay; it's to cover all financial pressures that councils are under. So a significant shortfall. But despite that, council's leaders again unanimously agreed to make an offer to our workforce. Uh, based around the Scottish public sector pay policy, and we recognise that by by doing that, effectively we are agreeing to to make further cuts in jobs and services in in future years. But we didn't feel that we could offer our staff any less than is being offered to other public sector workers, given their particularly her historic heroic efforts over the past year. I have to say, initial public comments from the trade union would suggest that. Even even that level of pay offer is not acceptable. So we may well be in for a difficult period of negotiations over the the the, the, the coming weeks. Turning our promise to specifically to the proposals in front of us today, these are extraordinary circumstances we're, we're facing at the moment, and there are huge challenges lying ahead uh, in the immediate future, given the economic and social impacts of the pandemic. So members rightly agreed that. We tried to set the revenue budgets for 2021 and 22 and 22 23 on the basis of minimum reductions in frontline services and jobs. And I think on the whole, we've we've achieved that. I think the proposals contained in the report, certainly for, for 21 22, uh, have achieved that objective and make significant progress towards the, the same outcome in 22 23. But we still obviously have a gap to. to to fill, and that's in large measure been achieved through the use of 5.6 million pounds of reserves. But you can only spend your reserves once, so that's not a sustainable strategy. And the report clearly highlights there's an estimated revenue gap of 9.6 million to be closed over the next two years, which I think should be a sobering thought to all of us. And to put that in historical context, province since 2008. Which is the first year that the SNP get government set its first budget, and coincidentally, the first time I moved a council budget as the council leader, the council has approved savings of just under sixty-three million pounds, and that's recurring savings. That's not one-off savings, and that's an average of four point four million pounds per year. And in the first four years of the current council term, savings have totaled fourteen million pounds, an average of three point five million pound a year. So the challenge that actually lies ahead is even greater than those challenges. But in terms of in terms of the budget, we've also reprioritized the earmarked reserves and we had some difficult discussions around that, I have to say. And that was to support COVID recovery with the creation of our six million pound Inverclyde job recovery plan and now a four million COVID recovery fund, providing much needed support of ten million pounds to our communities over the next two years. And obviously officers will bring forward proposals to, to the relevant committees in, in, in due course. And despite the, the ongoing cuts to our capital grant from the Scottish Government, we will have a significant three-year capital programme with total investment of around £60 million planned. As however, with revenue, the reduced funding from the Scottish Government for capital will make it extremely challenging in future years to maintain our existing assets, never mind investing in new ones. So there's there's positive things in in in, in the, the budget promised. And for me, the most positive thing is that we we have been able to to balance the book certainly for next year uh, without any significant cuts to services or, or, or jobs. Um obviously doing that in future years I think will be significantly more challenging. So with that promise, I'll, I'll formally move the recommendations in the report and invite uh, Councillor Cockerty to second. Jim. Thanks, Jim, Provost. Leader. Yeah. yeah. Th thanks, Provost, and, and thanks, Stephen. Um, obviously, Stephen takes a lot of time um, when he, he sets out his budget speech, and he goes into quite detail on uh, what we have done in Inverclyde, not only the last year, but over various years since, since he's been a council leader. And, and I know when, when we've been talking through committees and we've looked at things, we have got from the Scottish Government a number of one-off funding. We've got a number of ring-fenced um, extras uh, for this year and, and for years coming. 
Now, I know that um, our SNP colleagues will, will trumpet that and say how, how great these things are. And I know our, our Conservative colleagues will say, well, hold on, they're really just parachuting things from Westminster to Holyrood down to the councils. And there may be a bit of truth in both of them. But for us as, as councillors within Inverclyde, um, we're here with the stark reality of, of what we have got to do as councillors. And on Stephen's things, there's really only two major bits I, I would like to comment on. And the first really is uh, the public sector pay. You know, we've, we've all been saying how fantastic a job our workers have done over this last year. And I think we all agree on that. We've, we've seen our, our workers, our home care workers, our community development workers, our teachers, and we really do know every one of our staff um, does deserve a pay rise this year. And we do know when the government sets their public um, body pay rise that council workers obviously expect at least that. Um, but the problem is we are not funded by that. So, uh, as Stephen says, there, there is a difference between the 94 million we've got for all our services and the 240 million that um, is required just to meet the public sector pay. Uh, and you don't need to be Alan Puckering to to understand that there, there is a problem there. And that problem can only be solved by future cuts in our services for our council. And I, I think us as councillors, nobody wants that. I, I suppose that's in the downside, but I, I really do want, as councillors, I, I really do want to, to look at us from all parties and from the member budget working group, through all our groups about um, what we have done with regard to the jobs recovery fund and the COVID recovery fund. Um, I think from a, a small council like Inverclyde to have something like the Jobs Recovery Fund fund does all of us a lot of credit. Um, and it is to thanks to everybody here that we did vote through that unanimously yeah, to, to create that, um, even though it wasn't without its pain. So I think that ten million pounds we are putting into our communities over the next couple of years will be well um hopefully well seen by our communities is, is something positive to do. And um, just, just in closing, I, I would just like to, to add virtually what, what Stephen says, um, and that's to echo Stephen and the other leaders of our councils within Scotland. And these are leaders from all political parties, just to say that we still don't think local government is getting respected in this. And that in their words, the settlement to councils has been deeply disappointing. Uh, so with that, I'm happy to second the, this year's budget, Provost. Thank you very much, Jim, um, for seconding the, the motion, the original motion from Stephen. Now, I think uh, Elizabeth w would wish to speak. Thank you, Provost. Uh, I've just got a few words to say also, if that's all right. When we set the council tax a few weeks ago, I spoke about Donald Rumsfeld and his famous known unknowns and unknown unknowns in relation to what we've had to deal with in the past year. Our staff have been agile, compassionate and proximate at a time when the community have never needed them more. And we as councillors have been collegiate and community minded as we've navigated our way through the ever changing landscape of strategy and operations. And we've been a safe pair of hands at a time when the community have very much needed us to be just that. We're here today eh, promised to approve the Council's budget, and I would also like to thank Alan, his team, the CMT and the extended CMT, who worked really hard to get us to this point every year. The behind-the-scenes graph that brings us here is largely unseen, but it's certainly acknowledged and appreciated, and I would like that to be passed on to the, the teams. Thank you very much for everything that you do. Thank sorry. you, Elizabeth. Sorry. <laughs> Still more, sorry, I'm not even remotely finished. Sorry. So <laughs> some of the unknown or known unknowns are now just knowings. Um, we've got clarity, for example, on the parameters of the Scottish Government's funding for the council tax freeze. The nine previous years of funding for similar freezes were baselined, and this new allocation will also be baselined. And this has provided us with almost £1.2 million. Pounds which is more than the 3% increase that was the working assumption we initially modelled this budget on, and that's baseline. Provost, um, you'll be fully aware that I tried to keep the things that I disagree with Councillor McCabe on to an absolute minimum. However, we still can't agree on whether it was my conversations with Kate Forbes or Willie Rennie's that got that baseline decision over the line. We just can't agree on it, but it doesn't matter. I'm happy to concede the point 
Um, the fact that it's been defined as a good enough decision and good enough news for me. But this year, the funding package that we've got from Scottish Government includes an extra £4.3 million pounds to provide vital services in this community, which is equivalent to a 2.4% increase compared with last year. We've received the final funding to move to full delivery of early years 11 for tailors. We're receiving £8.7 million pounds in this coming year as an investment to do something extraordinary for our youngest children and for their families. We've received extra funding to allow us to implement the Carers Act, free personal and nursing care and the real living wage, and that funding comes to just over £1.2 million. Pounds. They're just examples, but they all help us tackle inequality and poverty. And in the case of early years funding, they show a commitment to the start of a sustainable generational change that we all want to see, and it starts now with us. And that's, I think, really quite amazing. We've also received our share of the £259 million that's come from both the UK and Scottish governments to support COVID-19 pressures. And I celebrate the fact that funding has been made available right up to the latter stages of our budget processes that isn't ring-fenced and that can be used truly to meet locally determined needs. <clears throat> Provost, I'm fully aware that things haven't been ideal. Financial decisions have been piecemeal. They've come late in the day. However, I simply cannot get my head into a space where I see that additional money coming into our area is anything other than a good thing. I do think that as Inverclyde's elected members, we need to be really careful that we don't fall into the trap of having a poverty mindset, where we think only of the more we could have rather than the much that we do have. We hold significant resource that can and does do so much for the people of this area. There's absolutely nothing wrong with seeking to develop and obtain more, but if we're sending out the message to our community, that it's home to some of the most deprived neighbourhoods in Scotland, that we're struggling with £200 million at our disposal, then I think we're encouraging an unhealthy mindset. If we, and I, I know we want to, if we are going to lead Inverclyde out of poverty, we can't afford to constantly present a narrative of a glass that's half empty. We need to use the resources that we have well and then proactively build our case and our relationships to work with others to articulately, articulate clearly what more means. The fact that the council leaders across the country are looking with the Scottish Government at a new system of dealing with local government funding is therefore very welcome. I think that's a great development that happened on Friday at Causal Leaders. Provost, I've commended the work of the Members' Budget Working Group in my column in, in today's Green Up Telegraph, available at all news agents. Please get your copy. Um, and I'll echo the sentiments that I've expressed in there now. It's a privilege to sit around the Members' Budget Working Group table. Provost, I'm thankful that that forum exists in this, this, this authority and I'm pleased with the contribution that my group have been able to make around that table in this particular budget. We brought forward the idea for a town centre manager post to support regeneration and recovery. We've helped to retain the 316 swimming for this year and also get an agreement to try and establish a clearer evidence base for free swimming to make more informed decisions about that in future years. The reinstatement of the feasibility study in Mark Reserve, the reinstatement of Barsbury Steps improvements, the continued commitment to a two year budget for this year and next. We've requested further clarity on impacts on our revenue budgets for the Scottish Government's under 22 um, transport policy, and also we fully support the COVID recovery funding, the anti poverty funding, and the employability and economic packages that have been set out in this budget. We will work with you to help these succeed and have impact. Another contribution that we hope to make is asking that we extend our coverage of free school meals. You will be aware, Provost, that the Scottish Government have provided funding for free meals for primary four pupils from yes. August 2021. You will also be aware that Inverclyde's primary fours already received free school meals because of a previous budget decision that the Council supported us to implement. I've already requested information outlining the possibility of us extending our local measures from August using the Scottish Government money for primary four and our own current investment to provide free meals for primary five pupils, knowing that Scottish Government have commended, uh, committed funding for free school meals across all primary stages by August 22. I ask colleagues to support me through the ongoing work of the Members' Budget Working Group with this practical measure to support our children and alleviate the pressure on the pockets of their parents. Provost, I know that with decisions, hopefully such as that one, we'll continue to make the case that our services do make things better for people. I absolutely support this budget as a further step in the direction of doing just that and supporting recovery for Underclyde. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity of I, I, I didn't time your, your speech at all, uh, Elizabeth, but uh, anyone who wishes to make a, a contribution, it should be done within 10 minutes. Um, now we're on to another member very much a known known, 
Um, Christopher. Thank you, Provis, and you'll be pleased to hear that. I don't think I could ever speak for 10 minutes, so yeah, it should be a little bit shorter. I would also like to thank Alan and his team, the CMT and extended CMT for the work that's been put in each year. Often the last minute to get to this point, which we can get the budget for next year. I have to say, Alan is always very good at dealing with the what does this mean for us questions based on a few minutes' notice. And I'm sure we all hope we can go back to having a few weeks or even a few months' notice of government spending prior to Inverside Council setting a budget. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> If I may, I I would be please go ahead. I, I, please, please, please. Uh, if I may, I'd like to say a few words on the economic regeneration of everyone played following COVID. I support on from the creation of the £4 million COVID recovery fund from the fund received from the Scottish Government. Obviously, as the government said, is, uh, where does the money originally come from? But uh, I think the Scottish Government gave us it first of all. We can use that fund to develop a combination of short, medium, and long term strategies which complement and enhance the previously allocated jobs recovery funding, anti poverty funding, and the current regeneration projects, including City Deal. Our group looks forward to that challenge and are keen to work with other groups to develop these strategies. An important part of the COVID recovery process will be further develop opportunities as the City Deal projects mature and come to fruition. I am a firm believer that the generation and economic Development is like painting the fourth bridge, it never stops. We always have to get an engineer reference in somewhere. In this regard, I'm very particularly pleased that the earmark reserves for feasibility trust studies has also been able to be retained. I think this is crucial. The town centres, especially the unit, will need new strategies to deal with economic shock of COVID on top of the systemic issues faced previously, which we are all aware of and which we've all discussed. We need a lot of investment in our town centres, especially the unit. I am therefore pleased that our proposal to create a town centre manager course has been agreed. Therefore, I am pleased to support this budget. And just, just to say, I think we all want it, but let's be ambitious for Inverclyde. Thank you very much, Christopher. And on that note, no, is uh, Councillor McLeod, Jim, have, uh, do you want to contribute? Uh, yes, uh, Provost, thank you very much. Just, uh, just to say that. Uh, I share with uh, other other people's uh, other colleagues' comments here, uh, in thanking Alan and his team in finance, the corporate management team, uh, all of our staff in the council, uh, and the trade unions, uh, particularly over the last year, which has been a, a very difficult year. So it has. Um, it's good to see that I think a lot of the funding that has came to us. Both from the Scottish government and and money from the UK government as well. Uh, I mean, I think in, uh, you know we can always make a claim that you know we need more money for for this and and for other things. Um, but at the end of the day, there there is not a, a, an infinite pot of funding there are available, um, and uh, we we are we are in difficult times at the moment. Uh, but it's good to see. I mean, Liz has already. Made comment about uh, many of the initiatives that have been introduced and uh, have been funded to tackle things like poverty and COVID recovery and uh, social care in in Brookside, and and that that has got to be seen as as good news. And uh, um, I, I'd just like to commend the uh, members' budget working group for all the hard work that they have done. They've met uh, very often over over the, the last. Uh, eight nine months, uh, and I commend them for all the work it had done. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Promise. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks again, Jim. Um, now I think uh, Councillor McAlaney, uh, Jim, I think you want to add something to the mix. Yeah. Thanks, Provost. Councillor McCabe's open remarks were that he was pleased to move this budget. And that he spoke highly of the, the collaborative working from all groups. I would echo that and echo the, the, the thanks to, to all the officers uh, involved in getting us to where we are today. There are many good things about this budget. Free travel for the under-21s. Free school meals for all primary children. With regards to that, I was pleased that the current administration accepted the SNP proposals to offer free school meals for primary four children. Uh, over and above the primaries one to three, 
in last year's budget. However, it must be stated that the current Labour administration voted against this proposal the previous year. I'm also proud that the SNP fought hard to, pre to prevent a damaging Tory Brexit. The SNP are protecting the NHS from privatisation. We're consistently voting against austerity. We've got free prescriptions, £50 million fund to tackle child poverty. We're committed to abolishing the disaster's universal credit. We've mitigated, mitigated against the Tory bedroom tax. We've delivered 1140 hours of childcare through early, early years learning. That all with one hand tied behind our backs. <coughs> tied to a discredited and not fit for purpose Westminster, who insists that we, the people of Scotland, do not have the right to decide our future. We will thrive as an independent country, and the people of Scotland will get that opportunity to vote for that in a legal binding referendum. We are big enough, we are smart enough, and we are rich enough. Thanks, Provost. Thank you. Uh, that's that's going to be a very open-ended statement there, Jim. We are rich enough. I'll be up to your door tomorrow morning in search of a loan. Right, um, uh, Councillor Murphy, I can't see you, Natasha. I'm looking for you, not constantly, but uh, where are you? No, Provost, thank you. Oh. Sorry. I tend to have my camera off because otherwise I can't see everybody and then my audio goes, so it's just easier to sit without my face on half the time. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to go down the same lines as possibly the, my previous colleague who just spoke there, but I just wanted to reiterate my thanks to everybody who took part in this process and start off with a couple of things that is a bit disappointing. It is disappointing to hear that we're worse off than the settlement we got given in January. That is disappointing. And it's a shame that since we've all been elected for this term, we have never had more than a year's budget to set. That means that we've not been able to create stability for our constituents. And that's something that I think all of us would seek to want to do going forward if we were to be in the council for more than just this term. It would be good to see the return of two or three, four, maybe even five year budgets. Um, and I just wanted to also say I thought that the the play strategy amongst the other reserves that we'll be spending was particularly something that we should celebrate as a council, especially after a year where so many of our young people and children have had to use outdoor outdoors as their main source of exercise throughout the pandemic. So I just wanted to say thank you to everybody and just point out that even though this is great that we can put this together and we can collaborate in this way, that it would be great to be able to have a bit more stability for, for the council and for our constituents too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Natasha. Um, before I call on the council leader to sum up, does anyone else have a comment to make? Councillor Rebecca, Councillor Rebecca, channel. Thanks, Provost. It's just to thank Stephen for the way he chaired the uh, member working group and all the members of it. Uh, some people, I think, when they came in, re didn't realise the way it was run and what was previously done in this area. And we're a shining example for the rest of Scotland on that, where we come to, let's say, a happy understanding of each other's feelings. To Alan Booker and his staff and every member in this building, you've heard me saying it repeatedly, and one night I'll be leaving this shortly, I don't see her again, is Sharon. We've had great workers through the years, and you go outside and people complain about them. But I can assure you, doesn't mean to say you're always agreeing with them. They've been excellent. And that, that's, that's the, the other thing. Now, if, if I've got one complaint that really gets me, and you'll get people in the paper, when there's a camera book, I say they work. That's them working. I got this, I got that, I got this, and they forgot that they could be outvoted at a committee. And the sooner they realise that, we are working for Inverclyde. And everyone, irrespective of who you support, who you don't support, Never nails. Let's work for Inverclyde. I've repeatedly said that through the years I've been in there. I've had more arguments with people in my own party at the time, but I put my my opinions forward. There's too many people now want to tie themselves onto the bigger place, and it's all theirs. Let's look at what we need, because I'll tell you what we need in this area isn't it what they need in Glasgow or what they need in Ayrshire. It's our area, and if we're going to work to get this up. We've got to forget about them in a way, 
and work, work full wholeheartedly for Inverclyde. I'm serious in that promise, and we've had some great under uh, arguments with some great understandings. And I liked Elizabeth earlier on, and the way she said, and the way she joined it. But uh, you know, let's stop looking about. I did when there's other members who could vote you out, and your your thing will won't go through whatever you're proposing. So we've got to get this working together, and that's how we work together. You get the votes, not just one party against the other. It's cross, it's cross the chambers. So I just hope that what happens beyond next year, that we get a better understanding of how the council needs funding, all councils, because there's people out there right now suffering, and they're just on that borderline, and one penny can cost them a lot of money, one penny over that line, and that's a shame. These things have got to be looked at for everybody. And I think that's the thing we should be looking for. And I think Inverclyde has done a tremendous job through the years trying to help people less fortunate than others. Let's keep fighting for that, irrespective of what you want in the national thing. Locally, we're together. Thanks, Provost. Thank you, Chano. Um, after Chano's plea for consensus, I think we have one more comment, uh, one more member wishes to comment. Um, Tommy. Yes, thank you, Provis. Uh, can I just associate myself with previous comments from other speakers regarding the thanks to officers for, for, for their help preparing the budget? But I think one significant figure which Mr. Puckin referred to was the 18.8 .8 million use of reserves. And I think uh, we, we only have that money because of prudent fiscal management by officers uh, and previous administrations, not in this last three years, but over a period of years. And the fact that we have that money has allowed us to protect jobs and services within this current budget and also allowed us to create a code recovery fund, which will benefit uh, everybody in Inverclyde over the next few years. But I don't think we should be under any illusions. The, the reality is, no matter what you think, this budget and it's in the papers we, we're facing a 9.1 million gap in 23-24. We've got issues with the, the capital grant, which we've seen cut again twice in the, in the last two years. And we have the public sector pay issue. So while I'm pleased we can agree that budget, I think we have to understand that there are still tough times ahead. Thank you, Provost. Thank you very much, Tommy. Thank, thank you. I don't see any further comments or members wishing to speak. So. Can I turn now to Stephen, to Councillor McCabe, to sum up? Yeah, thanks, Provost. Uh, thanks to members also for, for their contributions, which are, are, are welcome. I'm not going to respond to all the points. I'm certainly not going to respond to Jim McAlevey's cry for freedom. Um, I'm sure I'm sure that will be for a, another, another debate. But I suppose in, in, in terms of one of the points made by SNP councillors is look at all the sort of extra ring fence funding we're getting. And I suppose that is a useful way to deflect from the fact that the core funding has been consistently cut in real terms year on year, which simply means that councils have less flexibility over what they spend the funding on. And it means that we are more implementing decisions by the Scottish government, rather than making choices of our own, and if that's if that's uh, your view of local government, and that's what you <laughs> think is um, what local government should be doing, then, then who am I to who am I then to challenge that? It's not my view of local government, because my view is it's local government, and local government means that we make the decisions on behalf of our communities, and we may well decide that some of the priorities that the the government has has decided are also our priorities, but. I genuinely believe that we should have far more discretion over how we how we spend our, our funding. And 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 to say that the settlement that we've received this year is a good settlement, which is the implication of what's been said, is simply no what's the what's the view of SNP council leaders across <laughs> Scotland, including those in our neighbours in Renfrewshire and East Renfrewshire and Western Bartonshire and Glasgow. They all signed up to a motion that said the settlement was deeply disappointing. They're all deeply disappointed, particularly around the, 
decision not to give us the flexibility around the PPP, and and that's why they've uh, asked for a meeting with with Kate Forbes. I know sometimes SNP councillors are reluctant to be critical of their government in, in, in public. Um, hopefully, at least in private, they will be making the case for a better deal for for, for local government, and specifically on the universal free school meals. I'm a big supporter of universal free school meals. I'd like to see free meals in secondaries, not just in, in, in primaries. But I'm also somebody who's prepared to pay higher taxes to fund that and not actually fund it through cuts to local services. And that's that's the simple reality that there might be an extra fifty million pound coming to local government to fund the initial expansion of, of, of free school meals. We don't even know whether that's enough to be perfectly honest, because there's no prior discussion with local government. We don't know if there's going to be extra funding for capital costs to increase the size of canteens and and buy new kitchen equipment, etc. So we'll need to see actually whether it's, it's it's enough to fund it. But to me, that policy should be funded through taxation, not through cutting services. And Jim referred to uh, the, the the expansion and Inverclyde of universal free school meals to. To, to, to include primary four, I would simply remind members that that was agreed to be funded through an increase in council tax. So we were prepared to put up tax locally to fund that initiative. And if actually we had been able to agree a three million pound modest increase in a three, sorry three percent modest increase in council tax this year, and get the night our share of the ninety million. Uh, grant, we would have had an extra 1.2 million to, to to look at actually potentially implementing things like an expansion of a universal free school meal. So yeah, there's 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 a lot to to welcome, but as as Tommy rightly pointed out, there are significant challenges ahead, and there's no point in burying our heads in the sand and 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 saying everything will be all right in the night. There are challenges ahead that. Whoever is running the council uh, post the 2022 election will be facing big, big challenges. Thank you very much, Stephen. So the motion has been put, it's been seconded, and it has been discussed fairly extensively. So do, do we approve the recommendations of this report? If I take that as unanimous. Um, right, well, let's turn to item three. It's a temporary variation to standing orders relating to contracts. Now, I'll, 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 tr I'll try and explain this, but I think most of us know what we're talking about here. The Council's contract standing orders stipulate that some actions can be taken only by the corporate procurement manager. So when Brendan, Brendan Harlow left, we agreed on the 29th of October that Scott, Scott Allen would assume Brendan's responsibilities on a temporary basis. Scott is now retired, as you know, so the council is asked to approve that the interim service director of corporate services and organisational recovery, that's Alan for short, take on these duties and responsibilities again temporarily. Do we agree? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Thank you all. And before you all leave us, um, I, I, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Sharon was there, uh, at, certainly at the beginning, and I hope she can hear everything I'm going to say. You know, it's, uh, I'm not going to say, obviously not, nothing vile or untoward, I hope. <laughs> uh, but Chandra has been with us for some 39 years. She actually uh, started here on a break from university. It is the longest known break, break in university history. She has been a model of what a, 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 a council officer should be. She is meticulous, and you'll see that with the, with the minutes. Uh, she, she, but above all, she is a great source of advice and sometimes encouragement. Um, if 
you cry silently, look to your left or right, Sharon will be there to mop away the tears. She will be greatly missed by, by all of us, all the members, and she will be, she, she will be greatly missed by her colleagues. Um, so she's been here for 39 officers. Nobody can say that she's a fly-by-night officer. Um, and we can't say where's the loyalty, uh, where's the devotion to public service. She is public service. Thank you on behalf of all the members, Sharon Lang. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Provost, for these kind words. I feel as if it's retirement is a bit like this. Like, thanks, Sinatra. I've been at so many meetings. This is definitely my last. I leave today, and I really appreciate your very kind words. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.